Welcome back. I'm Retro Buck, and today we are reviewing Ghosts and Goblins. I did a short review about this during an unboxing. You can find that in my unboxing playlist. I'll put a link right here. So check it out after this video. I also want to remind everybody that we are still doing a giveaway to give away a free NES game. We have selected Dragon Warrior to be given away. The cutoff is October 31st, so subscribe, hit the bell notification, and comment down below you register to win a game. Now, let's get started. Ghosts and Goblins had to be one of the hardest games that I played as a fat little kid. Death in this game is not just failure. It's also, well, a fact of the game because you're going to die a lot. You're going to die so much that you're going to hate this game. You're going to hate this game with such a passion. Such a passion that is going to burn into your nightmares. Because you're going to die again and again. And again! And the platforming, oh, let me tell you, the platforming is horrible. When I want to jump, it won't jump forward. And when I want to jump forward, it almost sends me too far over and I miss the platform altogether. And then I can't make the jump. But this game has been reviewed again and again by a bunch of other YouTubers. So, I'm not just going to give it a review. Mine's going to be a little bit of a quick review. However, what I'm mainly trying to do is bust the myth that you can't beat the game without the shield. And I feel today, we're going to accomplish that. So, tie yourself in and get ready for the thrill ride. We're going to pop in Ghosts and Goblins and get started. So Satan swoops in and steals your girlfriend and you have to get her back. Weren't they kind of asking for it? They were chilling out in a graveyard. The first level is full of zombies and this is where I normally farm for the knife. The items drop randomly and it took some time just to find the knife. You can run out the timer to find it. Once you've got it, you can head towards the first boss. Fight through a couple more green monsters and zombies and you'll get to the first boss and he's pretty easy to kill with a knife. Oh, you hear that sound? That's the timer that means that we farmed too long for the knife and now we gotta try to rush to the end before we die and have to start back at the beginning. After defeating the first boss once more, we head on towards some platforming. And this may be the easiest platforming in the game. You dodge some flying knights. Kill a couple more green monsters. And finally, we'll meet the woody pigs. AVGN said he thought it looked more like pigs in a blanket, but I always call them flying burritos. Finally, we get to the boss, defeat him, and get the key. So here we are at a tower. Level 2 is a lot of climbing and there's a lot of enemies. The biggest issue I had is not the amount of enemies, but one platform in the beginning and I just can't make the jump. Come on, jump, 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 God! I had to jump blindly from a higher point just to make it across and I barely made it. Next, you're fighting through a house full of imps and climbing through a tower of big men. 
and there's so many enemies, you gotta take your time. But you can't take your time because of the timer. So dodge the birds and kill the imps. And you gotta get through this ridiculous platform. I mean, it's hard enough to jump from one platform to another without being thrown around in the air. Once you reach the end, you face off with the two bosses, and they're both that quote-unquote unicorn. So, you defeat them both, and then you grab the key, and then you'll head to the next level. So make your way through the cave, killing a buttload of demons, and a lot of flying burritos. They're all over the place on this level. You also have to watch out for the suit of armor that turns you into a frog. It completely leaves you defenseless until it fades away. The boss here is a dragon and just like Centipede, you have to kill him in sections. Once he's dead, grab the key, head through the door, and you get to the bridge. So cross the bridge watching out for the enemies. Slay another dragon. Grab the key and now we head up our final climb to fight the devil. You're surrounded by blue devils, burritos, skeletons, and you have big men waiting for you up top. If take your time anywhere is important, it's here. But the timer is a serious problem. And whatever you do, do not grab the axe. I grabbed it accidentally and it does absolutely nothing to the boss here. And then it's happy trails back to the beginning to find a knife. After finding the knife and heading back to this boss, I've learned if you take him off screen and slowly bring him back in a few, he's frozen for a few seconds so you can get some hits in. Once he's dead, grab the key and head on to level 6. Level 6 is where you'll find the shield, which I've decided to leave behind for the sake of dusting a myth. But six is a pressure round with ladders. Each level you go up, you face a previous boss. Now here you defeat two Satans. Grab the key. And then it's on to fight the devil. Wait, what? So I guess technically you need the shield to beat the game. I, I mean, it's just not letting you go into stage seven, but that doesn't mean that you need the shield to actually beat the boss. All right, I'm going to obtain the shield, defeat the boss, but I, I think I got an idea. We're, we're going to find a way around this. So I got the shield and the thing it has a short range, but it does the job. The boss is pretty easy with the shield. But, as you see, it's strange. But it doesn't take much to kill him. And his attack is pretty easy to follow. So there's a level select code that you can use to pick the level you want to go into. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to obtain the knife. And then we're going to take the knife and go straight to level 7 and fight the boss with the knife. And you know what? Just for kicks, we're going to try the javelin too. And let's just see if it's really a difference to not have the shield. I mean, the shield, it's such a short range. You know, the, the javelin and the knife has better range than the shield, so we're going to compare them. Okay, for people who aren't aware about the level select, hold the right button and press B three times. That's Y on my controller. So, one, two, three, up, one, two, three, left, one, two, three, down, one, two, three, start. So after you put in the code, you can use A, B to select which stage you want to go into. So I'm here at the final stage with a knife, 
and this knife has great range compared to the shield and it seems to be doing just as much and I, I don't really see the difference the shield seems to be more of a, a letdown than the knife I mean the, the sh makes it seem hard I even tried the javelin the javelin is tremendously better the the range is insane compared to the shield and it still does just as much damage I killed him in the same amount of time with the javelin as I did with the knife the shield took a little longer, but that's only because it has such a short range. Out of all the mini bosses that we had to fight through that was insanely hard, and a lot of them you had to use special weapons for, the big guy, the main guy, the top dog, he's the easiest to beat. You could beat him with a javelin, and it took me just as long as it did with a knife. And at least with a javelin and the knife, you had longer distance. Maybe they were just trying to make the game a little bit more difficult by adding a requirement, but I think they were just trying to hide the fact that they had a crappy boss. Well, guys, that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you are interested on in keeping up to date with things I'm working on, you can follow me on Twitter right here, or you can check me out on my Facebook page, which is right here. Until next time, friends, stay home, stay safe and play games. Catch you later. I gave you my heart.